So after grower, you have the finisher. Yeah. Finisher, um, usually the bird will eat between 1.5 and 1.8 kilograms of wow. finisher only. And that is in... Like in, t in the next 10 days. Next 10 so days. you can see that in the first 14 days it ate half a kilo. Yes. In the next 10 it ate a kilo. A kilo. And now in the next 10 it has eaten close One. to 2 kilos. 1.5. So you have started your farm, right? Your broiler farm. You decided to start. There are so many things that you have to put into account. The quality of the birds, but also the quantity. How many do you need to start with for you to actually make any sort of money? And if you have these birds, where do they drink from? What do they eat? My man. Yes. I'm going to call you Guma. <laughs> Please, yes. My guy, Guma. Uh-huh. Tell me, mm. what kind of quality or breed of, 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 of chicken do mm. you need? Mm. How do you know that quality is mm. good? Let's start mm. with the quality bit. Okay, now mm. the quality bit, mm. let's say you're, you're starting with broilers. Yeah. They are cows that produce their old chicks. Yes. So you just have to do a quick, ma for example, in my case, mm. I use beans and chicks which are still, of course, the best quality chicks on the market. Yes. Even their feeds are the best quality feeds you'll get on the market. So mm. If you can, uh, reach out, get chicks from Beansika. Their offices are everywhere. But this is not to limit you. There are other companies that produce chicks yeah. all ac across the country. Yeah. So do your research, uh, uh, go and pick up uh, book chicks from any of these distributors. Yeah. Now you have your chicks. Yeah. The chicks eat a, a different type of feed for every growing stage we talked about. I want to know that. Uh -huh. mm. There is the brooding, the growing and the finishing. So mm -hmm. in brooding, which is day 0 to day 14, yeah. they eat a feed called starter. Starter? Starter feed. Okay. It's the most expensive feed. Yeah. But it's, yes, it is the most expensive feed. Okay. But it is also the most important. Okay. So they eat starter for 14 days. Mm. Every bird in that time for kg of feed. 0 0.5 kg so but now in, in the 14 days in the 14 days okay. so now let's look at it on a case of one bird yeah one bird will need half a kg of starter yes and how much is a kg um currently we buy a kg of starter at 3500 that's one dollar yeah 3500 yeah a dollar one, a dollar per kilo a, yes so, so then a dollar takes care of two birds a dollar takes care of two bags. In 14 days? In 14 days, okay. yes, in terms of feed. Yes. So you're done with the brooding phase, mm. the starter is done. You go to growing. They eat a, grow, a feed called grower feed. Grower feed, they'll eat one kilo. Now, this now varies. Now they're bigger. They are getting bigger, now they are growing their structure. Ah. Yeah, it's like it's growing its bones and... Yes. So this is, you give, we, here we give one kilo. Mm. But this depends on your pocket as well. Yeah. You can give anything from 0 0.8 kg to 1.5. 1.5. Of course, if you go up to 1.5, you're increasing your cost because yep. grower is the second most expensive feed. Yes. So we do 1 kg. So now in total, our bird has eaten 1.5 kg. The starter and the grower. So uh, uh, this, this, this now uh, grower is between day 15? Day 15 and day 25. And day 20 for the next yes. 10 days? Yes, the next oh, 10 days. Okay, that's so 1.5 kilos per bird. Now that's where we are in total. In total. Starter and grower, we yes. are at 1.5. Together? Yes. Uh, so after grower, you have the finisher. Yeah. Finisher, um, usually the bird will eat between 1.5 and 1.8 kilograms of wow. finisher only. And that is in like in, t in the next 10 days. The next 10 days. So you can see that in the first 14 days it ate half a kilo. Yes. In the next 10 it ate a kilo. A kilo. And now in the next 10 it has eaten close One, to 2 kilos. Close 1. to 2 to kilos and, and, 1. In, and in less days. In less days. Wow. So that you, it shows you how much the appetite grows. Eh? Yeah. So for example these birds we have here now are eating about uh, maybe 3.5 tons of feed every day. Mm. Just this farm. Mm. The upper farm eats another maybe about 2.5 to 2.8 tons every day. Wow. So it they do eat a lot. And that's why in the cost question, your biggest cost is feed. Your biggest cost is feed. Yes. So that's why I'm telling you, 
do half a kilo of grower of starter yeah. and one kilo of grower and one kilo to manage your, your your costs. costs. Then when you go to finisher, finisher is the feed you give until day 35. Yeah. For some other companies out there, there is something called eco finisher. Mm. Eco finisher is way cheaper than finisher, mm. and it helps your birds maintain weight, not grow. Because uh, after day 35, this after day 35, the bird is no longer it's growing less than it's eating. Uh, so if let's say it's eating 1,000 yeah. shillings, yeah. it's growing 800 shillings. And yet before day 35, it was maybe eating 800 and giving you 1,000. So you have to make sure that they eat as little as possible after day 35. Interesting. Let's talk. Let's uh, now this, this. Yeah, this right what, here. What is this? Is what we call pelleted feed, uh, Kyle. Yeah. This. There are two types of feed. Mm -hmm. There is mash feed and pellet feed. This uh, pellet feed is more expensive. Pellets are more expensive. They are more expensive, but they are they boost. They provide higher efficiency for feed consumed. In other words, a bird, let's let me give an example. Mm. A bird will eat three kgs of this, and to gain the same weight on a mash feed, mm. it will maybe need to eat 3.5 kg or 3.2. Ah. Because of that's what we call efficiency of growth. That is true. Exactly. So if you can afford it, you use the pellet feeds. Another advantage of the pellet feed is that this one pellet contains all the nutrients that are meant to be in this feed. So, so you don't you don't have to use concentrates. No 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 no. You don't you just is, feed them on pellets. You just open the bag and pour in the feeder. That's it. That's it. And this pellet contains every nutrient. However, if you're using let's say concentrate mm. or you're using uh, mash. Yeah. With the concentrate and the mash there is the mixing pr processor. Mm. In some cases, like initially when I started my farm, mm. you would find they've mixed your feed, mm. salt is on one end of the feed, then fish is on this end. Mm. So a bird is not getting a balanced diet, diet mm. eating the feed. Mm. So the, the, sorry, the, the, the pellet feed mm. provides all that in one pellet. In one so pellet. it's much, much more efficient. So it saves time as well. It saves time because by day 35, day 36, 37, your farm is cleared. You clean it out and then wait for the next batch of chicks. Okay, uh, let's let's look at the water. Yes. Because uh, I'm sure that chickens must be hydrated water is full act, time. It's right? more important than feed. So what kind of drinkers yes. do we have to use, we who are starting? Okay, so there are three kinds of drinkers. Yeah. There's the most rudimentary one where people just get jerry cans and cut them. Yeah. And pour water on inside yeah the problem with that is hygiene eh? yeah the birds play in the water they and as they play in it the water splashes outside too much litter also litter inside in. then litter they is in, in it uh -huh. litter yeah. is in the water yeah and also litter uh, water is in the litter hey. so you have bad litter and bad water yeah then there are these drinkers these are called bell drinkers this drinker uses bell drinkers. bell drinkers. Yes, it uses. So it's, oh, it's stuck on it. Yes, so it uses. At, down. It uses atmospheric pressure. Hey. So you can see it has a small hole here. It keeps the water keeps coming out as long as it doesn't exceed here. So it won't hey. pour. It won't pour. It won't pour. You can see the area around is dry. The birds access it very easily. Yeah. Water is very important for birds. How much? Are so these? a bell drinker like this. Yeah. Um, is about 6,000 shillings. That's in Container Village. That's almost two dollars. Six, yeah, 6,000, 7,000 shillings. So two say two dollars each. Yeah. Um, and it feeds like how many? One drinker? Uh, one drinker, the calculation is one drinker to between 25 and 40 birds. And 40 birds. I wouldn't I advise you to exceed 40. Yeah. Please, in terms of uh, providing drinkers and feeders for your birds, mm. please provide as many as you can. Because these are feeding can. points. Eh? Yeah. If you look around my chicken house, there is no single feeder that has competition on it or any drinker that has competition. If the feeders were not enough, you would find birds fighting each other. That's why I'm seeing there's just enough feed. Uh -huh, there's enough, enough feed water. and you can see some birds have eaten, they are resting. Some others have drunk, they are resting. So availability is very important. So how often do you put the food and, uh, and the water? Um, water, now for example, on, uh, on the farm we have two types of watering systems. Mm. There is 
this bell drinkers yeah and then we have also nipple lines yes the nipple lines yes uh, what is the nipple lines must be so expensive no shockingly mm. the cost of putting bell drinkers is just just a small amount less than what you would use to put the the nipple lines and yet the nipple lines have advantages that are so many for example the water supply as long as water is available yeah. it's in the house yeah this it doesn't depend on boys carrying jerry cans to fill the yeah, drinkers yeah. up and, and that of course it's uh, very it tiresome won't get diseases exactly, coming exactly, into the farm exactly exactly oh, so that's... even even as they bring the water in mm. it spills eh? it spills and those spillages cause litter management issues wow so, as much as you can have nipple lines yeah. because the water is always available and it's clean it's clean water because it never touches the ground. It's easily accessible to the birds mm. and it's well organized. Yeah? Well, to wind up this uh, particular episode, uh, as you can see, we, we, we've gone real mm. technical. Mm. Now, yeah, we're and, moving and we've now. Dug deep. I mean, if you're not understanding <laughs> what this guy is saying, then I think poetry is not for you. Yeah, yeah. Because this guy is as but coherent it's, it's, as they can. It's for everyone, really. Everybody can start. Everyone can. One last word about what we've just talked about to my people who are watching okay, um, who probably haven't been taking this quality thing around the, the poultry farm yeah um one what, last advice what i can say is mm. your the productivity and profitability of your farm is directly related to management the practices you have in place and the quality of your inputs yeah if your feed is bad it's guaranteed your chick won't come out well. If your chick is not good, it's guaranteed your chick won't come out well. And if your management is not good, it's guaranteed. So these are the points where you need to make sure you get it right. Make sure you have the right feed in the right quantities at the right time. Make sure your water is readily available to the birds. Yeah. And uh, make sure your management is just as good because that's what guarantees performance. Bro. I hope you start Kyle, eh? because all this, I hope I you are not just... I already start, I have a little small farm ah, somewhere. Ah, well, what I need now is, is the money to put in. But then again, if you do not subscribe, how am I going to get the money? <laughs> Seriously. See you on the next one.